Okay guys, you know that to carry the lateral load in any structure, we need to use the bracing. Okay, but to connect this bracing with the beam and as well as with the column, we need to use the gusset plate. Okay, but in many cases, we simply neglect the design aspect of this of this gusset plate. As a result of which, you can see that many cases this gusset plate buckle. As you can see in this picture that this particular portion of this plate has buckled. Okay. So, in this video, I will discuss how to design or what are the factors you need to consider when you are designing this particular gusset plate. Okay. So, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay. So, let's start today's topic how to design the gusset plate. If you are not familiar with the gusset plate, in that case, this is for you that uh, normally to design or to connect this particular bracing with the beam here this is the beam and column we need to use some plate that is known as gusset plate here you can see this is the gusset plate okay and you can connect this gusset plate with this bracing with the use of welding as well as with the use of bolt as you can see here we have used the bolt to connect this gusset plate but here you can see we have used the weld to connect this gusset plate now the question is why this gusset plate actually fails simply if you are applying load let's say you are applying compressive load so here you are applying compressive load as well as here you are applying the compressive load now before transferring this compressive load from this particular location to this column or to the center of this column it has to travel through this gusset plate right so we can say that due to this compressive load our gusset plate is actually under the action of a compressive load okay or you can say that this particular gusset plate has been sandwiched in between these two compressive folds. So, simply we can say that this is the compressive force, here is the plate, and here is another compressive force. So, simply this gusset plate act like a column. So, definitely, if your column is not strong enough, in that case, under this compressive load, it will buckle like this okay or your gusset will fail so how to check this buckling or how you can ensure that your gusset plate has sufficient strength against this compressive load okay so before discussing about the gusset plate let talk about buckling of column i know you already know it and in that case if you don't know you can watch it okay so let's say we have a column like this this is pin support this is pin support and we have some external load that is p and let's say this unsupported length is l and also if we look at the cross section let's say the thickness of the column section is t and the width is b so of course the column will buckle about this axis or this minor axis right so let's say the external load is p e okay so we have to check the load carrying capacity now how to check the load carrying capacity of this column well if you know the cross section you know the area that is b times t and if you know the critical stress that is your l stress let's say it is f c d in that case the load carrying capacity p critical is simply a times fcd okay now to find the fcd what you need to know you need to know about the grade of the steel let's say we are using 250 grade steel in that case to find out the fcd you have to know the slenderness ratio or the kl by r ratio slender ratio okay so let's say you have cylinderness ratio of 100 
okay in that case corresponding to this 100 and corresponding to this 250 you will have a fcd that is equals with 250 times 0.579 that's it okay so to calculate this scale by r you need to know this effective length or scale in this case this is pin jointed so kl is coming as l simply and what is r r is your radius of gyration that is square root of i by a and in this case i is about this minor axis okay you already know what is a so what is i i about this minor axis is coming as 1 12th times b times t cube okay so from all this formula you can calculate the critical load carrying capacity if your critical load carrying capacity is greater than this externally applied load in that case your column is okay under bucking right the same theory or the same approach is applicable for your gusset also now the question is you have to find out the length here you can see that length actually varies here the length is this much here the length is this much but here the length is only this much so the length varies how you can calculate the length and not only that the width also varies here you can see the width varies from section to section so where you should consider the width as well as the length okay so before finding out the length you have to find out the width okay so when you have applied any external load like this it will disperse okay so here we have used the bolt connection so the dispersion will be started from the very first bolt okay now the question is if you use weld what will happen so if we use weld in that case the resistance has been started from this very first point okay so the distribution will be started from this point okay now what will be the angle of this distribution as per established rule by white mole the 30 degree dispersion principle is used okay so simply project a line at the angle of 30 degree from the very first bolt to the very last bolt okay you will get the width okay and you have to consider this width for determining the cross sectional area of the plate the thickness is already known to you the thickness of the gusset and here the width is the width more width okay so you have got the t as well as the width now you can calculate the r easily right now the second part is you have to find out the length the effective length okay so here you can see that from this width there are lot of unsupported length this one this one this is the furthest again this one again this is the shortest so which length we need to consider simply for kl by r ratio you can find out the effective length l as l2 or the furthest point distance from this width mole width this is the width mole width right so this is the maximum or you can also use the average of all this okay so this is the maximum this is the minimum and here is another one okay so in any cases you will find the kl the rest is very easy okay so that's it about the checking of gasset plate design if you like this video don't forget to share it